All right, everyone, and we are back. So, Kore was Sonza Jita Akura. Nani Shiro Sono Yoni Tskurata. Hajime Karaku de Arioni to Umaretano. Ningen to a cheer. Kore was Akshika Mutan. Hitobito got Skuriageta Junsuina Tanit Shinda. Daga Sono Koi ga Akuda to Stemo. Are Hon Ninga Soreo do Mokawa Mada Wakarumai. What Angra Mainyu thinks about his own actions. So, Kono yo subete no aku hon ninga. Mizkara no kodo ashto nagekuka. Yoshito warauka. Sorewa wareware no hakaru tokoro dewa nai. Moshi are ni hito ni chikai ishi ga ari. Mizkara no sonzai yo nageku no dearewa. Sorewa aku daro. Daga.自らの存在に何の疑問も持たなければあれは善だ。何しろ、そのように望まれたもの、自らの機能に疑いを持たぬのであれば、それが悪であるはずがない。そう。生まれながらにして持ち得ぬもの。初めからこのように望まれなかった
He steps forward. There's not much time left for either of us. So we have to settle this match quickly. We have to extinguish the Elder's fire before our own blows out. お前たちを裏やんでいる。求めても得られなかったもの。手に入れたというのに手に入らなかったもの。Yeah, he's empty because he couldn't obtain it no matter what he tried. He sought and sought, but couldn't obtain happiness. And the only way of life he found was carrying death. So how can he abandon his way of life now? So I resume breathing. Pulling oxygen to my lungs, I get my body ready for battle. Strength enters Kotamina's body. There's no way this is going to turn into a battle of magic. We're both almost dead. All we can do is to drive our fists into our opponent. There's no technique or strategy involved. It's a mere brawl to the death. He needs to kill me to make his wish come true. I need to kill him to destroy his wish. We both put our lives in the line. I need to beat him and eliminate the shadow before my life burns out. He kicks off the ground and runs straight at me. Huh? I don't have such power left in my legs. I lower my stance, eyes fixed on his oncoming chest end. <laughs> I swing my fist full force at a speed he can't avoid. But my fist swings through empty space and I'm the one who gets hit. <laughs> I don't see Kotomine. That speed, the enemy that charged me disappears from my view in an instant. Crouches down by my left side, slams his palm into my stomach, and kicks up at my body with his lightning fast legs. His kicks are like fire. It's been a while since I felt pain strong enough to make me lose consciousness. How many meters was I kicked up? Impact are strong enough to rip my head off. No, if I'm gonna talk about impact, the second blow to my stomach was strong enough to pulverize my organs. I know this. Taking the shortest route with any in any initial movement, a circle and a line, it tries to damage the inside instead of outside. And he's really good at it. It's not something he copied on the spot. He strikes again, forcing my fused joints to bend. I get up. Akutimina stops and looks at his fist. His hands are covered in red. It is. A price he had to pay to attack a body made of swords. <laughs> I gather my consciousness and face my enemy. It doesn't matter. He won't stop attacking even if faced with the thorns of death. Kotamina lowers his stance. His trained body is getting ready for the explosion. The enemy closes in. Kotamina is far stronger than me. His fist won't break. At this rate, the hourglass itself will be destroyed before all the sand spills to the bottom. I don't look away from my enemy, closing in like a spark. There's only one thing I have to do. I have to be faster than the last time. I have to punch him faster, even if he avoids it. 
All I can hear is the sound of my heart pounding in my ears. I take no notice of the rumbling or the raining bits of earth. The one I must defeat is right in front of me. I don't care about some centuries old wish or the end of this small world. For Emi Ashiro, defeating this enemy is the last remaining purpose. Everything's falling apart. The collapse is definitive. The search that took to the Einsburn a thousand years. The earnest desire that took the Makiri 500 years. The continuous world that was never completed is about to end. <laughs> Amidst the chaos, it is still conscious. I don't want to die. The body is a mere collection of dark red flesh bearing no resemblance to a human being. The swarm of worms fills the cavern. It cannot maintain its body even when using all of the worms. The writhing figure is just a moving pile of meat, but it's alive. The mass curses its rotting, melting body. I don't want to die. Its obsession is the only thing keeping it in this world. I can't believe Zokin's still alive, man. It crawls. Makiri Zokin, the old Magus, his soul's vessel destroyed, remains in this world only through sheer force of will. But it's only a matter of time before he dies. He stuffed his rotting soul into a hurriedly constructed worm, but he can't heal his wounds after being killed twice. I don't want to die. The old Magus has turned into a pile of flesh and will die after going through immense pain. He will rot into the very end and die in regret. With his earnest desire in front of him, what he yearned for, what he was about to obtain, it is his dying cry from pain or anguish. I don't want to die. He doesn't want to die. How can he just disappear? 500 years. The result he achieved after 500 years, the reward he deserves, is right in front of him. So why does he have to disappear? <laughs> why does he sound like that? <laughs> he only recalls pain. Makiti's Karma, a noble family of magi that was driven out of their homeland and declined in this far eastern country, unable to familiarize themselves with the rules of the foreign land. But that's wrong. If that were the case, salvation would be possible. If that were the reason for his bloodline's end, he may have accepted fate. I don't want to die. But that's not why. It's not that the Japanese soil didn't suit them. The Makiti didn't die out because of the external factor. They merely dropped out. It has been 300 years since the start of their search. 300 years was their limit. The family died out in Zokin's generation. The suffering started there, and the old man could do nothing but deny the truth. Mato Zokin's life was a frantic protest against the end of the Makiri bloodline. I don't want to die. 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 <laughs> Wow. <laughs> right, dying's not possible. The rotting body, it's painful. Nothing but pain. The 500 years were filled with pain. Pain filled the whole life. So what's so bad about seeking eternity? Suffering without satisfaction. Can't disappear without leaving anything behind. The Holy Grail is right there. Grant the wish. The answer being not wanting to die. The wish will come true on top of the cliff, but it's impossible with this body. This short distance is nothing compared to 500 years, so why is it so far away? The meat crawls across the floor, leaving bits of itself behind. Such tenacity. It should have no function to move, but it moves forward with tenacity. A thought that's filled with only obsession. Ignoring the impending collapse, it moves forward to the Holy Grail. But someone calls out to the hideous monster. A bell like beautiful voice. Nani? He looks up. Within the blur stands a girl. The flesh stops moving forward. It looks up at the girl in astonishment. The old Magus doesn't see her. A woman deep in his memory. 
Einsburn's golden saint who has stayed in his mind without fading. 200 years ago, his partner sacrificed herself to create the great holy grail. It hasn't faded at all. The holy woman still has the eyes he adores. <laughs> And the girl lets out a familiar voice. The pure question shields his mind from the pain. Why? 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 Now that she asks him, it is strange. Why does he want to die? Why shouldn't he die? Dying means escaping the pain, so why did he cling on to life along with all the pain involved? Oh. <laughs> Did he find salvation? He remembers. Yes, in the beginning he had a supreme goal. To obtain all creation. To obtain all knowledge. To reach where no man can reach. To exceed the limits of the body and reach the infinity we call the soul. The species called humanity has set limits. To go outside the spiral of the brain. To eliminate and cure all hatred and suffering. He remembers. The grief of finding out there's no such thing as paradise. If it doesn't exist in this world. If its creation is impossible with a human body, he inspired himself to go to a place where it can be done. Not to make a new world, but to change his human life. Oh. Oh. That's right. To the sky, to the limits. The you are born and reach the unimaginable land. The ideal utopia. It is for that reason, that's why he sought the Holy Grail. He sought a miracle beyond human reach. He can't disappear until he makes it a reality. He couldn't give up no matter how many times he was beaten, no matter how often he was shown that he could not reach it. There's only one thing he dreamed of, to eliminate all evils of this world. They risked their lives for an ideal that couldn't come true. Oh. Oh. That's why he remained. He kept seeking even after his enemies died, knowing it was meaningless. He believed he had a reason to exist and that his existence would bring on a successor. That's why he continued to live. He can't die no matter how much it hurts him. He wanted to overthrow the youthful anguish he felt when he was young. That was his way of life, the answer he came up with. Yes. Even if his life is not, not compensated for. <laughs> that was his first wish. The pain. How small is the wish of not wanting to die compared to the pursuing a wish that will not come true? So, so the Atana. You should teach, I. He looks up at the world. The cavern's collapsing. Mato Sakura has been released and taken out of this small world. The third sorcery that was created by mistake, I'm gonna mind you, is flickering like a heat haze. And the old Magus accepts that everything is out of his reach. This end was determined at the start. This is all the Makiti's journey can accomplish no matter where it ends. <laughs> but, in no way it's a miserable end to life with pain. It's probably just the start. This journey is just starting. 500 years is nothing. How can it be reached in a mere 500 years? What they wish for is a distant, dazzling sacred, something that will come true in the distant future. A growth of the human species that will come after many years, thousands of years, tens of thousands of years. So this is a trifling but meaningful manner to the start of the journey. It's not that the desire ends here. The journey starts here. The history to reach the distance starts its loop with the end of the dream. <laughs> The voice is that of the old Magus. 
No matter what light he sought, he's a heretic who approved the wrongdoing. Not hiding it until the very end, he cuts his attachment to life. The last one disappears. One of the magi that sought a miracle, the observer that also started everything, rots away. A pile of flesh is buried without a trace by the crumbling rocks. The one that lived on, taking many forms. Every last trace of the Magus vanishes from the world, as the embodiment of his desire is destroyed. His palm slams against me. It doesn't matter what my body's made of. The attack's meant to damage inside me so the impact mercilessly pierces through me. I'm overwhelmed in this battle. My fists are dodged and parried while his attacks land cleanly. Every time his fist hits me, my vision whites out. It's not because of the damage, but because of the pain brought on by my left arm which tries to heal and overwrite my wounded body. I protect my head. My face hasn't turned to sword yet. It'll be over if I'm hit there. I can't manage to strike him, so I put everything to fending off his attacks in my head. My sense of pain is already numbed, and my vision will be cut off soon. The only pain in my brain can sense is the invasion from my left arm. His bloody fist pulverized my body. My left arm frantically tries to repair me, and consequently... Everything turns white. My vision and mind turn too white to be recovered. I thought he was going to make more swords. Even thinking brings pain now. As my body is destroyed, swords are created, trying to keep it alive. Oh, there you go. In exchange, my brain continues to be ground away. I don't know which one of us would die first. The bones in his fist are destroyed. He bears it with an agonized expression and keeps up the assault. I dodge and swing my right fist. It's repelled. A jolt runs through my left rib. I resist the sword stabbing my brain and punch again. I can still move. I can still move. I can't move. This is my lap. That hurt. That one hurt. I shouldn't feel any pain, but my body's about to cry out from it. Flung like a rag doll, my body hits a large piece of rubble, narrowing, avoiding falling off the cliff. I can't get up. If the impact hurts this much, the pain to reinforce my body would be beyond imagination. It'd be the end. I'll burn out, unable to bear the pain. But if I go to sleep before that, if I close my eyes... The enemy walks to me. He can't run either. Both of us might disappear within the next minute. Then... What did you swear? Who did you swear to protect? Live. She said she won't be saved unless both of you are alive. <coughs> what did you lose? What did you lose in exchange? <coughs> the enemy comes closer. He drags his legs trying to get close enough to crush my skull. No way. I won't lose. That man has no goal. He's just following his way of life he protected. But I have one. I have a goal. I have a reason that I have to beat him. A reason that I have to win. <laughs> I don't know how much I made cry. I was crying where I couldn't see her. She only smiled in front of me and always cried by herself. <laughs> It sucks that he forgot her name, but at least she still recalls her image. Yes, so I have to protect her. The crimes committed, the crimes that condemned, the crimes remembers. I have to protect her from everything. The girl that could only smile in front of me, 
Her body was dying, but she still said she'd protect me. So she can eventually smile in front of other people. You're getting in the way of that. <laughs> Last burst of energy, man. Let's go. Get lost. Sakura can't smile if you exist. One blow. I punch my enemy in the face with everything I have. Two blows. Three blows. Four blows. Five. Six. Seven blows. I punch. I punch. I punch. I punch. This is it. There's nothing left if I miss this chance. I pull all of my remaining life into this miraculous chance. <laughs> I'm blown away. He deflected my attack and counterattacked me with a hard shot. Damn, I know. He won't let me punch him that easily. He's many times stronger than me, so he can easily fend off my attacks and come finish me off. Yeah, so what? The difference in our powers won't change. Things won't conveniently go right for me. I'm blown away and my enemy comes to smash my head. I'll lose. I'll lose. I'll lose. I'll lose. It's a self-evident truth. But my body still moves. Tommy. My enemy looms over me. My legs don't move. Yeah, my right leg really doesn't move at all. But I fired them up to raise my body. I won't die here. I can't avoid the enemy's attack with these legs. In desperation, I try to evade the death coming in the next second and... <laughs> The guy in front of me didn't make it. He's standing in front of me with an upraised fist. He looks down at his chest. The black stain is right where his heart should be. The difference in time. So he became half dead in the forest a bit before I did. Well, no thanks to you, dude. He's just like before. He sounds uninterested in anything, just like when I first met him at the church. The last master. The words contain deep weight, but the priest still sounds the same. It's natural. This man won't change even on the verge of his death. He continues to be my despicable enemy. <laughs> Did he smile in his last moment? On the verge of rusting away, my eyes no longer serve their purpose. The priest disappears from this world, with no one to bury him. I take a breath, drawing enough oxygen to allow me to move. My throat only moves once. Fortunately, it's not painful. Most of my senses have turned to steel. No matter how hard I try, I'm starting to feel faint. Let's go. It's my final job. I release my left arm. My consciousness is about to fade away. My last projection. I'll use the strongest sword I know to destroy the curse along with the great holy grail. It will be the definite end. I... No. 
can't go back if I use it. I know I'm going to disappear anyway. But I have to try to find some other way as long as I'm alive. <laughs> 